This is a Main Hustle Media Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Jackie O and you're listening to Militantly Mixed. Yo, this is Rashani from the Single Simulcast. And when I'm not making you laugh or making up parody songs, I'm kicking back listening to Militantly Mixed. Hey y'all, welcome to Militantly Mixed, the podcast about race and identity from the mixed race perspective. I am your host, Charmaine, aka Mixed Girl Man. And I have so much to talk about this episode. I have, I do have a number of episodes of interviews banked for future episodes. I'm going to actually do another solo episode today because I have a bunch of stuff to talk about. And then we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming next week. I wasn't expecting to do this. I did actually have one of the interviews planned for today, but I just had this insane week last week of very empowering things happen. So I want to talk about some of that. And also I realized I hadn't been discussing Mixed Dish, the TV show on ABC on Militantly Mixed yet, which is very strange given that I'm all about mixedness and I've been talking about Mixed Dish the show on all of Militantly Mixed social media over the last few weeks. I just haven't addressed it on the show. So I want to talk primarily on this episode about Mixed Dish and sort of how that impacts us as mixed race people and acknowledge the historical aspect of having a show that's centered around mixedness. Not not just a show centered around mixedness, more specifically a fictional narrative. And I'll go into more why that's significant as the episode progresses. Before I do that, I have a number of announcements. Let's see, I got news I wanna share and then I got announcements and then I wanna talk about mixed dish. Let's do it in that order. All right, so, (laughs) my throat hurts too because I've been talking like crazy for a week. So, earlier last week, I joined iFundWomen and iFundWomen is a crowdfunding website that focuses on female entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. And it is not only that it is a website where we can launch crowdfunding campaigns for our startup businesses, but they actually have a training and coaching program that help women streamline their business plans and focus their efforts in the right smart places so that when it comes time to launch our campaigns to fund our businesses, we are as tight as possible. I joined during their seven day free trial thing just to check it out. I didn't know what I was going to expect going into it. I have crowdfunded many things in the past. I I worked as an associate producer on a documentary back in Massachusetts years ago in which I I did a Kickstarter campaign on behalf of that film and I raised about $16,000. That is the most I've ever raised for a project. It was not my project, I just worked on it. I fundraised for my short film for college a couple years ago, and I have assisted others in fundraising campaigns for medical issues, for high school reunion, <laughs> like a couple things. Like I, so I've done a bunch of crowdfunding in the past at varying degrees of success, and I kind of thought I knew what the fuck I was doing. But then I joined iFundWomen, and after just a week's worth of workshops and coaching, private coaching session, I have learned a ton. So if you've been with me for a while, you hear me mention Main Hustle Media constantly and how I'm trying to get to the next stage in that business. And uh, Main Hustle Media is basically a two-part thing. I'm trying to build a physical studio space that is accessible and affordable for people of color, LGBTQ folks, and differently abled people, providing access, affordable access to creating content for people that are marginalized from the mainstream. That is my main goal of everything that I kind of do. You can see it in my shows, the the topics and the uh, categories of each of my shows, and you can see it in sort of my day-to-day personality. My goals and my efforts are always towards the margins for, for those of us who sit in the margins. I sit in the margins. I want to support and help other people that are in the margins. And I have different kinds of access to things that will help and support me as I build this business. The other part of the business is Main Hustle Media, the podcast network for POC created content. You can see that on all of the shows, Black Radical Queer, Militantly Mixed, Blurred Comics, and By Furious are all about 
POC stories from the margins. Some of them are queer stories. Some of them are mixed race stories. Some of them are geek stories, you know, across the board. So Main Hustle Media Podcast Network is what I've been actively doing for the last little over a year. Main Hustle Studios is the future business I've been trying to actively work on. And ever since I lost my job earlier this summer, I've been able to kind of zero focus in more on the studio and I'm getting finally getting to a place where it's becoming more of a reality that this is going to be able to be something I can launch next year. Uh, more of a reality, I guess, than it had been in the previous year. I had to build the network and, and everything like that with the shows uh, while I tried to figure out what exactly it was I wanted to do, and now I know. With iFund Women, I will be able to streamline my resources to get to a place where I can fund my business next year. So I had a lot of empowerment, a lot of excitement. I will go more into what's happening with Main Hustle Studios as we get closer, but I just wanted to talk about this program that I think is amazing and it's helping women fund their businesses in an industry that is active, absolutely stacked against us. Uh, for venture capital, less than 1% of all businesses get access to venture capital. That's regardless of race or gender or anything. For small business loans, women receive between 7 and 9% of small business loans and of that 7 to 9%, uh, 2 to 3% are offered to women of color. So. There's a lot of things stacked against uh, women who are trying to start businesses. And crowdfunding is another way that you can kind of do that. And grants is another way. Grants actually have a, a lot of application and paperwork process with little return. Venture capitalists, a lot of networking with little return. Crowdfunding, a lot of networking with a varying degrees of return. And loans, a lot of applying with little return. So there's a lot of things stacked up against in, in terms of funding a woman-owned business. iFund Women has figured out a way that helps women actually get their business funded. They have a lot of success with their platform. And so I've actually joined a membership with them and I'm taking their training program so that in the next couple months, I will be able to actually launch a campaign to support my business. That was one bit of news. It's exciting. Their platform is amazing. If you're trying to start a business right now, I encourage you to try sign up for their seven day free trial and, and also come and talk to me so that we can engage about this process. Uh, second bit of news, uh, over the summer, I was offered a scholarship to attend Work It Fest, which is a podcast festival for women and non-binary folks. And I received the sponsorship, which I'm so grateful for because I would not have been able to afford it otherwise. I've wanted to go to this festival the last couple of years. I couldn't afford it. And this is the first time I was able to go. They curated a program, a festival program over two days that was, it was as if it was geared just for me. All the things and concerns I've been having, all of the, I want to try this, but I don't know enough, or um, this is something I'm interested in. How do I execute? All these things that I've been dealing with in my head for the last couple of months, they had panels about. It was insane. It was like it was geared exactly for me. I participated in so many panels. I've got a notebook filled with notes. I am just in the process of kind of decompressing and, and figuring out what I learned. <laughs> um, but I've had such a great experience. I have actually, I got out of my comfort zone and I actually socially interacted by choice with a bunch of people. I have new contacts now. I even fangirled out on a podcaster I follow. Um, uh, I listened to the show called The Nod, which is produced by Gimlet Media. It's uh, hosted by Brittany Luce and Eric Eddings. They are friends from way back that have this podcast together that focuses on black culture at, through kind of a very big fan of blackness type of model, uh, or type of lens. And I just absolutely love Brittany. I love Eric too, but we're talking about a woman's festival. Brittany was the one that was there. I went to the panel that she had with her producer and um, it was called obvious in hindsight and it was basically about building your team the right way and all these things that you would find obvious after we talk about it in the beginning it wasn't obvious to get there it was a great panel on building a production team which i can't wait to be able to do because i'm still a one woman production show and after it i actually walked through the chairs in the crowd and walked up to her and i was like Brittany, can i fangirl out to your face and she was like yes please do 
She talked about how weird it was that people even listen to her show. Like when she meets someone who actually listens to her show, I was like, I've been following you since episode one. I absolutely adore you. Uh, she's told me I looked familiar, which made me all kind of butterfly because I do tweet at her a lot and she has responded to my tweets and she said my face looked familiar. So that was dope. We also hugged, which if you listen to my shows, you know, I'm weird about hugging. I'm not weird about it. I'm Charmaine about it. Uh, I come from two cultures that aren't very physically affectionate and so hugging takes me a while and um, usually I need to know someone for a really long time before I'm comfortable but when she offered a hug it felt right in the moment and I participated in the hug and it was lovely and I very much enjoyed getting a chance to meet someone and also I just was it was weird that I fangirled because I grew up in Southern California. I see celebrities all the time. I work in and out of entertainment sometimes, so I do see celebrities. I don't often get uh, excited about it. They're just regular because I'm used to it. I totally fangirled out. Like, it was just, yeah, it was very strange. <laughs> and uh, she seemed to enjoy being fangirled at. I enjoyed fangirling. It was so much fun. So Work at Fest and I Fun Women made last week very women-centric in a very weird way because I don't normally often find comfort in predominantly women organized spaces because they tend to be white women organized or you know for white women spaces in this case both things I participated in was very inclusively all women and non-binary it was awesome and I'm so glad I got out of my comfort zones and did those things I have met some really great people. I hope to foster these relationships going forward. It was just amazing. So I just wanted to talk about that. There's no reason. It didn't have anything necessarily to do with the shows, but they will impact, those experiences will impact the shows going forward. So I just wanted to hype it. I'm excited. If you're thinking about podcasting next year, work at Fest. I think it'll be in New York next year, but keep it in mind. It was amazing. Uh, oh, and next bit of news. I have been granted a professional badge to attend Geek Girl Con in Seattle in November. So this is now the third time I've received a, a free badge to an event, a, um, a con or a festival event. Um, this is actually, I'll be going representing Blurred Comics. So as a woman of color geek this is a big deal for me to have been acknowledged as a professional in this game and be accepted to attend geek girl con i have never been to seattle before so i'm excited to finally get to go up there because i've been wanting to go up there for a long time and to be able to be the reason i go there is because of a geek girl festival is amazing uh, but one thing i want to do while i'm up there in seattle i will be up there from november 15th through the 17th and I would like to do a meetup if possible on the evening of Saturday, November 16th. So if there are any militantly mixed listeners out there who happen to be in the Seattle area who will be willing to come to downtown Seattle for a meetup, I want to hear from you. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create a to be determined event page on the militantly mixed page on Facebook. If you are in the area and you'd be interested in doing a meetup, I would like you to go there and mark your interests while I continue to look for a space. So I've never been to Seattle before. I don't have any contacts up there. I have some family up there, but I don't know anything about the place. So I will look for a location to have a meetup, a cafe or, or something like that. If you are listening and you have a space or you know of a space that might be willing to host us for a meetup, please get in contact with me and let me know as well. And we'll go ahead and make this happen. So it may be a combination of mixed geeky girls from geek girl con or it may just be listeners from militantly mix i don't know yet i'm putting the feelers out right now to see if there are anybody in the area i know i have a few listeners from there because i've i've seen it on social media a bit i don't know how many of y'all are out there though so mixed folks of seattle or the seattle surrounding area if you would like to do a meetup saturday november 16th in the evening at some point We'll put something together, holler at me and let me know you want to attend. Slide into the DMs on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, or email me at charmaine at militantlymix.com. S is in Sam, H-A-R, M is in Mary, A, N is in Nancy, E, and militantlymix.com. All right, so that was I Fund Women, Work at Fest, Geek Girl Con. Yes, that's all the news. Uh, well, I guess this is the news. This is a celebration, though. 
Patreon sponsorship. <laughs> At the time I am recording this, it's October 5th, and we have already hit $265 in Patreon sponsorship, monthly Patreon sponsorship as of today. The goal I set for October was $300 a month. In August, I set $100, we achieved it. In September, I set $200, we achieved it. In October, I set $300, we are almost there and it is the beginning of the month. $265 a month, $35 to go, and we got a whole month to get there. I am so excited and so grateful to everybody who has been participating on the Patreon sponsorship. I can't tell you, I can talk about it, but you, you won't really know unless you do do things like this where you put your heart, sink your heart into an activity that starts out as a hobby but becomes a future. And that is exactly what Military Mix was. It started out as a hobby, but it was something I wanted to grow into as a business. And I'm closer to being able to do that now than I have been in the last year. And your sponsorship is why I'm able to keep doing it. Especially now, as you know, my current situation, my physical life is not in the best state right now. I have been passed over for many a job, including just yesterday. I was told I was perfect, but uh, <laughs> in the eighth time I've been, I've not achieved a job because I was perfect, but, or I, they really liked me, but. Um, and so I'm in a scary time. I can't afford to pay my rent. I can't afford to pay my bills. My car actually just had a check engine light yesterday and I can't investigate what that is for. So physically my life is kind of in a rough place right now, but with your sponsorship and your support, I'm able to keep the shows going no matter what ends up happening in the near future. Um, if I lose my home or whatever, I will be able to do this as long as I have access to the internet, which I always will. Somewhere, somewhere, <laughs> I will be able to make this happen. And there's just so many things that I now have access to that I'm able to go to that grants me more access to improving these shows and your support helps me make that happen. In fact, I couldn't afford to get up to Seattle even though I was granted the free badge and fans and friends, listeners sponsored my travel to get me to Seattle. So without your support, I'm not able to do the things that grow the show with your support i'm doing things i never thought i'd be able to do before i'm so grateful i can't express enough how grateful i am and i appreciate that you are listening to the shows and acknowledging that this is not just a hobby but it is work it's a lot of heart and soul work but it is also a lot of physical work to make possible and your sponsorship of it helps me and validates that it's a reason I'm doing, that there is a reason I'm doing this beyond myself. Thank you to everybody who's increased their patronage recently. There's a lot of people who are changing, shifting their reward levels or their donation levels up. Thank you so much. That is making a huge impact. Uh, a lot of new folks that are jumping on as well. And that is paying the bills. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you would like to, if you're not sponsoring yet and you would like to, you can join at as low as a dollar a month to as high as anything you wish. There are some exclusive t-shirts that are available only through Patreon sponsorship. Uh, there is also uh, some new rewards that I got ideas for when I was at Work It Fest, so I'm going to get those up as well soon. If you would like to sponsor the show, you can start at a dollar and work your way up or whatever you want to do. Go to patreon.com slash mixed and to sponsor the show there on a monthly basis. If you would like to sponsor the show financially, but you don't want to commit to a monthly sponsorship, I, that makes sense to me too, because you never know what your life is like, you can go to paypal.me slash militantly mixed, uh, but all of that sponsorship goes a long way in keeping us going and and also keeping us growing. So paypal.me slash militantly mixed for one time only, drop them coins, or patreon.com slash militantly mix for a monthly sponsorship. You can also go to teespring.com slash militantly mix or it's like slash store slash militantly mix and you can um, buy a militantly mix t-shirt. So we have the logo tees and we also have the message tees varying various message tees. I've seen some pictures come through recently of folks that are either buying 
the shirts for themselves or for mixed race relatives that they have. And I am loving seeing all the different faces that are coming along with the shirts. So please send me more photos. Uh, if you do post it on social media, tag Militantly Mix in there, hashtag it be your mixed ass self. That way I have access to seeing it. Or you can just send them to me again, my email address, Charmaine at militantlymix.com. Uh, Cause I think I want to do some kind of art project with all the pictures of the people being their mixed ass selves in the t-shirts. Uh, whatever t-shirts it is that you have. Uh, I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet and maybe I need more pictures to get there. But yes, please send me your mixed t-shirt picture, your 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 pictures and your mixed uh, militant mixed t-shirts because that's, I love them. I love them. Keep bringing them. Hey y'all, it's your girl Charmaine, aka Mixed Girl Man, and I'm jumping into the middle of an episode to shout out some of our Patreon sponsors. Now, I did recently redo some of the tiers, and so the reward levels have changed, and I kind of want to re-acknowledge people who have been supporting the show for a really long time. Uh, Some of those folks are actually personal friends of mine, and some of them are strangers to me, or they have been guests on the show, but they've been contributing to Patreon for quite some time. And I'm just going to kind of run through the list and uh, and shout them out. Uh, thank you so much to Aiden. Aiden and I have known each other for since 2005. He was a fellow grad student with my husband at UT. And he has been a good friend for many years, although we haven't seen each other in many years. But he's been supporting the show pretty much since the very first month, I believe, that I opened up the Patreon. So thank you, Aiden, for that. Also, another personal friend who I've known forever who has been supporting the show since pretty much the beginning has been Michelle Lockett. Another close personal friend who I met back in college. Ah, my goodness. 2000, maybe? 2001? Somewhere around there. We hadn't seen each other in many years, but I got a chance to go back up to Sacramento for a speaking engagement last year, and we were able to see each other in person then, and it has sort of reignited our connection, getting a chance to see each other. So thank you to both of y'all. To Katie, someone I worked with years ago in Massachusetts, has been supporting the show, and the continued support means so much to me, and I do want to acknowledge that you have been here with me for a very long time as well as Gretchen. You're all familiar with Gretchen from our episode. The first episode we discussed white passing. Gretchen is someone I went to high school with but did not know. (laughs) But we reconnected, I get or connected for the first time, however you want to put it, through the show. And we have now have tons of engagement. We talk about mixed issues all the time. And she continues to engage and support the show on a regular basis and i am so appreciative also her nephew is the person who composed and performed the theme song for by furious one of my other podcasts so it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving having gretchen in my life on the show and supporting patreon so those are some of the folks that have been supporting the show for a really really long time those of you who have just recently begun to support the show and have not received your shout outs yet those are jennifer g thank you so much for joining the show i haven't engaged with you yet so i hope to get a chance to connect with you sometime soon and uh and let's get into it unless i have engaged with you under your instagram name and i just haven't figured out that you're a connected person holler at me and let's get into it also would like to thank one of my dear friends thon who is been a guest on Black Radical Queer with Javi and Nicole. He has also been a guest with me on By Furious, but we are friends in meat space and I absolutely adore you. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Another friend that I used to work with who have stayed connected ever since is Morgan. She has actually been supporting the show for quite some time. She recently upped her support too as well. And I just, I just can't believe that some of these people that I've just known for years are out here supporting the show also Megan we used to be in the same knitting circle when I lived in Massachusetts years ago and then suddenly a sponsorship from her popped up and I had no idea she even had knew I was doing the show so thank you so much Megan for that and most recently and you're gonna hear an ad from this person coming up shortly but I would like to give a very special thank you to Britt Williams, a.k.a. the Slightly Annoyed Mixed Chick. She has her own blog where she talks about mixed race issues and being a biracial woman just out 
in this world. She has been a guest on the show also, I want to say maybe springtime in 2019. We engage constantly. There's always something mixed that we can be talking about, and we engage through Instagram quite often. We recently just had another Skype chat just because we hadn't talked to each other face to face in a while. And um, yeah, if you're not, if if you like my show, you should also be checking out her blog. It is just another channel of mixedness that you can access. So check out the slightly annoyed mixed chick blog, and you will also hear an ad from her in the show. Thank you so much, Britt, for your $50 a month sponsorship of the show. It means so much that you are out there doing things for mixed folks and connecting with me through this show. I am beyond appreciative. To all the other people who have started to support the show in the last two months who have already gotten shout outs on episodes, I just want you to know that I will continue to gush and be excited that you are participating at this level engaging financially with the show it does help keep me going it helps keep it it helps expand my access to people to put them on the show and this is for me i believe this is very important work because i've felt so disconnected through a large portion of my life and i hope to eradicate that for the generation of mixed folks coming up behind us and your support is helping that happen thank you again to my patreon sponsors all of you who I haven't named on this clip but have named before, and those of you who are still awaiting your online shout outs, they are coming as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so what did I cover? I find work at Geek Girl Com Patreon. Yes. All right. That's all of that. So let's talk about Mixed Dish. I did record an episode of reviewing the first episode of Mixed Dish with my co-host on Blurred Comics. It's from two weeks ago. I will put a link to that episode in the show notes of this episode in case you want to check it out. If you're not already listening to Blurred Comics, it is another mixed race show. It is me and my mixed black friend. We're both mixed black nerds. We talk about pop culture, news, comic books and things like that. I know some people probably avoid it because it does look like a very comic book centric show. Sometimes it is. Usually it's kind of about what's going on today in pop culture through our mixed race lens. So if you want one more place where you can absorb mixed race content, Blurred Comics is another platform that those shows uh, drop on Thursdays of each week. But we did cover Mixed Dish two weeks ago the first episode next week we're going to probably review the second and third episodes because we're going to we're going to want to keep that going for as long as it becomes it for as long as it is interesting to do so for the listeners um but for this episode of militantly mix there are a few things that i want to talk about related to this and then i would like some engagement with y'all on social media or through email to tell me what you think too as we go forward I am actively trying to seek out people to get me in that room, (laughs) the writer's room for that show. I have been tweeting at, I have been talking to people I know who know, who know, who know somebody. I am trying to get a gig on that show because I think there needs to be mixed race people at all levels of that show. And um, I don't know how successful I'm going to be, but I would like to be able to also come to them with saying, listen, I got this mixed race podcast. I've got all these people who have opinions and feelings about your show, blah, 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 blah. So, and then I just want to have discussions about it. So I'm going to open up a discussion thread for Mixed Dish on the private Facebook Militantly Mixed group. So if you're not already a member of that page, you can go to the facebook.com slash Militantly Mixed page and scroll through and you'll see the post about the link to the private group join the pirate group. That's where you can talk about mixed race issues without having to worry about whether or not your Facebook friends and family will see what you post. It's a closed group and I will throw up a mixed dish thread there so we can start engaging on the show. But I would also like, you know, direct contact if you want to come on and talk about it, whichever. Um, I want to, we have a rare opportunity to talk about a mixed race show on, um, that's actively airing on TV right now. So let's get into it. Uh, but for starters, If you've heard me talk about it before on social media or on Blurred Comics, I do have an issue with the title of Mixed Dish. 
I understand that it's a part of an ish universe now. And thankfully someone referred to it as an ish universe or I would have continued to have a problem with it. But the show Blackish actually is mixed ish. He created the show based roughly on his own life, Ken Kenya Barris. And the idea is that Andre Johnson, the lead of Blackish, marries a biracial woman has children of varying skin tones, and sometimes his black ass family is not black enough because of the biracial wife, and therefore the show is called Black Ish. So when Mixed Ish came out, I was like, all right, <laughs> fine. Mix black Ish already is Mixed Ish, but whatever. Um, but now that I know that the show's focus is the show's focus is the mixed race family that Rainbow grew up in you know, fine. It's part of the ish universe. This is the mixed one. The other one's ish universe, but it's the black one. The other one is about early adulthood. It's the ish universe. It's grown. I get it. Whatever. Moving on with my life. First thing I want to talk about this show that is amazing is that their theme song was written by Mariah Carey or co-written by Mariah Carey. It was also co-written by Daniel Moore, who's a white musician who's been in the business forever. I don't know the nature of their relationship as, as song creators together. Um, I know that she does write a lot of her or co-write a lot of her stuff. Um, so I didn't do much investigation there in terms of Daniel Moore because I don't care about that as much as I care about Mariah Carey being the one who co-wrote and performed the theme song for this. I think there needs to be mixed race people at every tier of the creative process of this show. And so having a theme song written and performed by a mixed race woman is extremely important. I'm also surprised I actually haven't talked about Mariah Carey more on the shows because Mariah Carey was a huge inspiration for me at a very critical time in my life between the ages of 14 and 16 when I'm trying to figure out my identity. Mariah Carey is on the scene being a mixed ass woman who's talking about being mixed. And similar to me, she is triracial. She has an Irish mother and an Afro-Venezuelan father. She grew up in white neighborhoods and in black neighborhoods. She wasn't black enough for the black folks. She wasn't white enough for the white folks. But like me, she pre presents very ambiguously pale, but people can identify blackness in her. So there's a lot of crossover that I've experienced that she has also experienced. And so she was a, an, uh, she was an idol, I guess, for me at that age. It was, an, it was an important time for me to see a mixed race woman on the scene. It's not like I wasn't aware of Halle Berry or anything like that, but she, since she presents more black and because people accept her as more black and because she talks as a person who's, yes, I'm mixed, but I'm black. Um, of course I idolized her as well, but her experience is slightly different because she does present more black than I do and people are going to accept her more non-black people are going to accept her as black before they will accept me as black whereas black people will b accept both of us so uh, shout out to Mariah for being her mixed ass self for as long as her career has existed and using her platform sometimes to talk about the difficulties of raising biracial children I don't think it gets enough heat it definitely should she should have more attention about this because she does actively talk about it but she created this song, it's called In The Mix. And the idea of the song is the idea of our life, that we're a mix of a bunch of things and we need to be able to live our damn lives this way and embrace it. And it got to debut at the premiere of Mixed Ish, which was called Embrace Your Ish. And so all of those things together, I think are very important. I'm really excited. And I'm gonna play the song for you right here. So this is where the format of Militantly Mix is such that it's just like my intro and then my guest interviews, whereas Blurred Comics and By Furious, I, I usually introduce a clip or something like that. And so this show, this episode of Militantly Mix feels like an episode of Blurred Comics <laughs> right now. Um, but anyways, that was the Mariah Carey in the Mix theme music for the show Mixed Dish. 
and I think I'm probably going to have that thing on repeat for a while because I can't, even though I know she wrote or I've heard that she wrote the song eighth grade about her melancholy of being a biracial kid when she was growing up. If you listen to, if you read the lyrics, the lyrics don't necessarily reflect mixedness, although she said that that's what she was feeling. Uh, so this is the first time that I can really think about being a, sh a song that's just like embracing mixedness, which I appreciate. Um, it's not that mix doesn't get mentioned in songs on occasion, but not in this way. So this is powerful for me. All right. So <laughs> I did talk about this on Blurred Comics. So if you listen to both episodes, you might get some double talk. But uh, when the first trailer of Mixed Dish dropped, and that was back when they had the different actor playing the father's role. Um, I don't remember the name of that actor, but he's from the Workaholic show, I guess, which is another show I don't watch. Uh, but when I, that trailer dropped, there was a lot of YouTube reactions videos that were created related to it. There was one that I really liked and it was, the title of it was called, Yay! Yikes! And that pretty much en <laughs> encapsulates my feelings about mixedness in the beginning. Now that we're two episodes in, I can kind of see a path with them and I'm, I, I feel a lot more confident. But when that trailer dropped, I was not sure where the show was going to go. And so I did very much feel, yay, a show centered around mixedness, a fictional narrative show centered around mixedness. But then, yikes, the stuff in the trailer makes me nervous about what's going to happen. Uh, I still feel a little bit of that way and I'm going to tell you why i did talk about it on the other show but i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about it here as well um it seemed very much oddly even though it's created by a predominantly black production team it seemed like a white person telling the story of a mixed family when i saw the trailer and i was nervous about what that would be so i absolutely think i don't know how many mixed race people they have involved in the creative process i know that at least two of the three children are biracial. I don't know about the writer room demographics. I don't have, I couldn't find that information to look up for this, but I need to know that they have more mixed people involved because on Blackish, I do watch Blackish, I love Blackish, they get mixedness. I've said things like they get mixedness wrong on that show, and that's kind of a hard statement, and I should probably asterisk that to say, from my experience of mixedness, they get mixed wrong on blackish sometimes and I was concerned with them being the creators of grown of uh, mixed dish also that that would continue but so far I think a lot of things are good I do have some yikes points but prime predominantly I think it's good uh, so the premise of the show is that rainbow Johnson who is the wife of Andre Johnson on blackish realizes her family doesn't know about her biracial upbringing as well as they know about their dads. And so she starts to tell a story and that welcomes us into the first episode, which we flash back to 1985 when Rainbow is 12 years old and her life gets flipped around and she has to leave a commune where she didn't, she wasn't aware of race in the commune. Everybody, although mixed in different skin tones, everybody participated together, everybody seemed equal. And so she didn't have an understanding of race or racial identity in any way, shape or form. And then her commune gets raided and now she goes back to, she goes into suburban life for the first time at 12 years old in 1985. I was seven in 1985, but 12 in 1989, Tw you know 11 12 in that time and a lot of what rainbow is experiencing so far is very similar to what i was experiencing around the same time so one thing i really am excited about for this show is that although there are cringy moments because it's really hard sometimes to hear that old way of people speaking about mixed folks it is the language from the 80s and it feels very authentic where that is concerned from my experience, because it looks like they've moved to the suburbs in Los Angeles. So their experience is very similar to my experience because I grew up down here as well. And um, there's a lot of crossover. So I'm gonna say from the jump, they're using the 1985 language of mixed race people. They're using 1985 uh, racist terminology. And the characters that are the example of racism in the 80s are doing it in predominantly a very 1980s way, which I think is very strong. To, I'm glad that they're doing it. 
there are a few things that seem like modern ideas that keep popping up in there that I'm not 100% sure. I, I was too young to remember if those things were going on at that time. But predominantly, it feels like they're using the language of the 80s and I appreciate that effort. Even as hearing it makes me cringe. <laughs> Which I wonder if a lot of you are feeling as well. Um, that is actually one of the things I'd like to hear about. So if you, if you are open to responding to me on social media about your feelings of mixedness, uh, one of the things I want to hear is, does some of this make you cringe, even though you're okay with the presentation, the representation of it, um, just because it was how it happened? Let me know. Holla at me. Uh, okay, so there's that. And they, as it continues to go on in the first episode, the kids go to school for the first time, a public school for the first time, and they are approached by a black child that asks them, what are they mixed with? And I have seen a mixed review of this on social media. Some people go, no black kid would do that. And some people go, that wouldn't happen. That happened, has happened to me before. It does feel weird because of the way it was presented, but that has had happened to me before. Um, usually black people ask me what I'm mixed with, whereas white people ask me, what am I? And so I feel like that was actually a strong choice for that first episode um coming at it hard with the weirdos thing mixed bag when I was in black schools usually I when I was in elementary school that's how the question was asked you're weird to me what's your deal whereas in junior high and older it was more about I see that you're black but what else are you so I think that was actually pretty uh authentic accurate I guess I think that was pretty accurate it was cringy for me to hear it though because it brought me back but I thought it was accurate and then in the first episode there was a scene that really um triggered me emotionally so I'm not going to say necessarily a negative trigger but it was an emotional trigger because I never experienced anything quite like this before and I'm envious of anybody who has and that is the scene uh, between Rainbow and her father when he who, who is white when he acknowledges to her your mother and I as an interracial couple have had to deal with a lot of problems but what you kids are going to experience pales in comparison to what we did you know like I am not or my ex our experience as an interracial couple pales in comparison to what you kids are going to experience as mixed race children and we don't have the language to talk to you about it and, you know, that, that acknowledgement from the white parent was a surprise to me. That feels like a very modern thing to have happened. I, because I didn't have that experience and I, and from the guests I've had on my show, I haven't heard many people express having had an experience like this, but to have a parent acknowledge that you are going to experience different things because you're mixed and they don't have a language for it. I am very envious of anybody who had had that kind of a thing. It, it, it made me emotional and I did cry a bit when it was happening because I never had anything like that and I wanted something like that so badly. So it did trigger me emotionally and even though it's meant to be a comedy, I'm glad something like that was in there, although I don't know how realistic that was. Um, because most of the people I've spoken to, including myself, for the show, we never had an adult come to us and, and talk to us like that. And usually it was that we were with a parent who didn't address race whatsoever, or if race came up, it was based off of protecting you from, based off your presentation. So it'd be like, act black then, you look black, act black, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, that one, that one was a, a big one for for me one of the things I have a concern about one of my yikes moments is that in the first two episodes of mixed dish they seem to be really focusing in on Mark Paul Gosslinger Gosslinger however you say his name uh character as the white dad and I'm concerned about that for a couple different reasons one is we see a lot of white guys he is a different kind of a white guy, but if he wins a lot or if he gets a lot of story time, that's going to take away from the experience that is important, which is those children. Um, 
and I'm not quite sure if they're doing that because he, as of right now, is the biggest star they have on the show, and it's a way of kind of compelling white people to watch the show for a while until they get hooked, and then they'll start telling more brown stories, um, and by then people are hooked, and so they'll have to be forced to learn about brown people. If that's what they're doing, great, keep it up. If that's not what they're doing and they're not aware of it, I hope they become aware of focusing in so much on the dad is going to um, pull from what I think is the important topic, which is the mixed race children. And yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm going to need them to pay a little bit more attention to that if that's what's if that if they're not planning on changing from white stories to brown stories soon. Um, so that's one of my yikes. One of my yays is I know that they had already established that Rainbow had two siblings and one was very white acting and one was, was well, on Blackish, Johan isn't necessarily stereotypically black acting, but you at least got to see that she had two siblings. So by the time she gets to this show, we get to see three siblings. One identified closely with the black folks, one identified closely with the white folks, and then Rainbow stays in the middle. So what I'm excited about is the opportunity of the different stories they're going to be able to tell about these mixed kids trying to fit in. I think with Johan being light-skinned and curly-haired and kind of geeky, they're going to be able to challenge him with his embracing of hip-hop culture and black folks and things like that with time. He's accepted right now, but maybe he'll say something goofy or white seeming and he'll be ostracized for a minute. That'll be very realistic and closer to maybe what I grew up experiencing. So that's something that'll be interesting. Maybe as he gets older and he maybe has a crush on a black girl or has a crush on a white girl, there's different ways that that can play out as well. So I think that that is really great that they have these three examples of mixedness that they're going to be able to share with Santa Monica her kind of attaching to the more materialistic and white characters there's a whole bunch of interesting things that can happen there as well and uh the adult version of santa monica is played by rashida jones on blackish and i wonder even though she isn't necessarily one of these materialistic kind of um celebutants or whatever in um in hollywood in her real life i imagine she got a lot of flack being a more a closer to white presenting mixed kid growing up in her circle I think she's talked a little bit about that so it's it's interesting that they'll have that with the child and I'm and the actress that plays the little girl is just hilarious I can't wait to see how they uh how they deal with her side as well I can't relate at all to the side that chooses the white side so I want to I'm going to need some other people to listen to watch the show and buy in and tell me how accurate and authentic they are playing her character and then with rainbow the being in between one thing i will say is i think the first two episodes are very heavy-handed in talking about mixed issues right off the jump and i think this is important because they're going to need to be educating while also trying to make you laugh during this show and the first few episodes are going to have to educate a lot because monoracial people of all races even the two that are represented here are not going to get some of this. They're going to think it wasn't that bad for us. And Rainbow is the example of how complicated it can get. The scene where she says to her father, if I choose to identify as white, I ignore my black side. If I choose to identify as black, I ignore my white side. And I can't do that. That is very much my experience. I couldn't, just because I was half white didn't mean that I could embrace it and just go with it because I was what I was more of. I was black. I was a yellow presenting black kid. I grew up around black people. I needed black people to see me, but I also really enjoyed my Japanese culture. I wanted to be able to talk about that too without being, you know, treated as weird or unusual. So I chose in quotation black because I had access to black but I would drop in as often as I could the other stuff I was mixed with because I wanted that to be part of my identity too so her experience makes a lot of sense to me and I hope that that continues on that she continues to struggle I do think they're going in really hard with her struggle and the whole thing of like even going so far as to having lunch in the bathroom every day I know some of those stories do exist and I have been solo in a lot of places as well. Um, but I don't know if part of that is going in hard to educate in the beginning. 
or if it really does feel like it's a natural way in which this character develops. So, um, I, I love that we have these opportunities though. The heavy handedness about the father, like I said, hopefully with some more watches, some more episodes, we'll be able to see that the stories start to do deal with the brown side. It, I think it will be really important to develop a stronger relationship with Rainbow and her mother as time goes on, because regardless of whether Rainbow struggles with being mixed, the world is going to identify her as a black woman before they identify her as a mixed woman. And she's going to need her mom's stories and her mom's experiences in her corner to help her out. So I hope our next episodes come up with situations in which her mother is the parent she can identify with the most in that moment. I do know that they established that Rainbow is closer to her dad in the adult version of it in Blackish. Um, but yes, we need to see we need to see a little bit more of because basically then it is two children that identify on the white side and that's maybe not necessarily 100 percent representative of how a family like that would play out so those are some of my concerns ultimately i'm extremely excited and one thing i haven't talked about quite yet before i wrap up is the importance of this being a fictional narrative versus a just a general documentary documentary style story about mixedness the reason why it's important that this show is a fictional narrative is because it's after we start seeing ourselves in fictional narratives that things start to shift in pop culture and the humanity of people the way white people view others in quotation fingers for example in early days of television, predominantly you saw white people. And if they, if there were black, brown, or yellow characters, they were played by white actors in black, brown, or yellow face, which is obviously terrible and problematic, but that is what they used to do. And then after a little bit of time, you would see one black character, or one Asian character, or one brown character pop up in something. And they were usually um, a token character or a joke character, or they were a one-off story about whatever that person's deal was right this black character came into this white school he did he did drugs and so now timmy's got to figure out that and blah 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 so it was still very tokenism and jokes made on behalf of the person of other to the main white stream and then eventually you start getting uh shows that actually do show more black brown and yellow people you get Good Times and Jefferson's and Family Matters and Cosby Show and uh, Fresh Person Bel Air, where you actually start to see the established black family. And because of that, regardless of how many white people were watching these things, there's more humanity in black families now because now the white mainstream is viewing this as, oh, they deal with some of the similar things that we deal with. Who knew? doesn't necessarily mean that changes a bunch of stuff, but it does change some stuff. And the acceptance of certain people now become a little bit easier, not entirely, but a little bit easier because they're viewing the fictional story families in such a way that changes their views on the humanity of others to them. It There, there are plenty of stories that kind of uh there are plenty of studies that kind of discuss this like if you see it it becomes more human it sucks but it's a thing uh you also see this with with lgbtq folks of course you see the the sissy character or the dykey lesbian the butchy lesbian or whatever and then eventually and they're the token and they're the joke and then eventually you come to will and grace and you actually see a gay man living a regular ass life he just happens to be gay. And over time you start seeing more gay stories and things like that in TV because we get this first dose that makes it more accessible. And of course, and that, that also follows with Fresh Off the Boat um, and a couple other things. There are some other Asian shows that didn't really jump off quite the real. Steve Burns, the comedian who's half Irish and half Korean had a show for a while, but mixedness wasn't the center of the show. It was more about him being a comedian. And, um, and so that didn't last for very long. Margaret Cho also had a show about her and her Korean family growing up when she was um, back in the 90s. And that didn't really pop off. And then Fresh Off the Boat does work. And that starts to translate into now you see more Asian driven stories in movies and TV. And so it's this 
tiered humanity, I guess, that kind of comes with fictional narrative. With this, with Mixed Dish, we are now experiencing the first time mixed folks are the center of something in fictional narrative. And that, I think, is the most important thing about this show. Yes, it is created predominantly by Black folks, but they are Black folks who either had mixed race people in their circle or in their family, and hopefully they are also hiring mixed race people to participate at all levels to tell those stories. Because one thing that I assume Kenya Barris knows, knows as a Black man is that representation matters and we need more of it that is created for the people from those categories by the people from those categories so that it is authentic and helpful to the community that is viewing it. So for us mixed folks watching Mixed Dish, some of us are seeing our story told back to us for the first time in a fictional narrative in what so far seems to be a very thoughtful and empathetic way. Of course, there's going to be problems and they're not going to deliver well across the board, but the primarily it is seeming to do that. And I am excited and grateful to have that experience for the first time watching fictional narrative to see my, a version of what my family was like on TV. I hope those of you that are watching it are feeling that same way. And I hope for those of you that are mixed but not mixed by black, white, biracial are also seeing some kind of parallel in your own life, just in terms of the experience of the mixed kids, I think, probably predominantly. Um, in the turmoil, I think, especially that rainbow experiences, I, I think that's going to cross a lot of us regardless of what our mix is so let's talk about it jump on the facebook page join the group the private group so we can chat about it a little bit more uh tweet at me instagram at militantly mixed or send me an email charmaine at militantly mixed.com if you don't want to come on the show but you do want to drop me a voicemail about your thoughts or feelings about this episode of militantly mixed or mixed mixed dish the tv show so far please call my voice line 323-545-6001 and I will play those clips in a future episode of Militantly Mix as we start to address this a little bit more. Uh, what are the things you love about the show? What are the things you don't like about the show? What do you need coming out of the show even though it's the first iteration of a mixed race family on TV? All of those things. Let's talk about it. I definitely want to hear what other people are feeling. Right now, the center of my conversations about mixed dish is really between myself and blurred vision on blurred comics because we both grew up with mixed race families and we know each other and grew up together i'm haven't had another meat space conversation about it besides with my husband but again my husband is mixed non-mixed in that he didn't he wasn't raised with a mixed race experience although he is mixed race so i want to engage more on a broader platform with y'all so let me know how you're feeling about this show and I guess I'll just wrap up kind of I want to play in the mix on the way out <laughs> and then we'll be back next week with a regular style militantly mix episode and I have a lot more interviews coming down the pipe also don't forget to get at me about GeekCon in Seattle for hopefully a militantly mix mixer all right y'all don't forget to be your mixed ass selves Bye. Militantly Mix is a main hustle media podcast produced and hosted by me, Charmaine Fury. Music is by David Bogan, The One. 
You can follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Militantly Mixed. If you'd like to become a sponsor of Militantly Mixed, please go to patreon.com slash militantly mixed for monthly sponsorship or paypal.me slash militantly mixed for a one-time only donation. And if you like what you hear on Militantly Mixed, please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to be your mixed-ass self. Main Hustle Media. Turn your side hustle into your main hustle.